Welcome back to another enlightening episode of Optimal Anesthesia. Today, we're delving into the intricacies of an anesthesiology encounter that recently crossed our path. Picture this, a 69-year-old gentleman, a history painted with strokes, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, HOCM, persistent atrial fibrillation, and a pending hip surgery that's about to put his heart at center stage. Join me as I guide you through a quick tour of the insights and challenges faced while navigating the complexities of HCM during surgery. It's an emotional adventure, and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride. We're focusing on the echocardiographic red flags, the heartbeat highlights. Imagine this echo scene. Left ventricular outflow tract pressure gradients hitting above 30 millimeters of mercury at rest, spiking over 50 millimeters of mercury during a little provocation. It's like the heart saying, got some hurdles to jump over here. But the drama doesn't stop. Picture the mitral valve doing a little tango called systolic interior motion, leading to moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. The heart's saying, oops, stepped on the partner's toes there. Now, zoom in on the heart squeeze ejection fraction dropping below 45 to 50 percent. It's like the heart admitting, working hard, but not pumping the party up as I should. And for a bit of diastolic drama, if the Doppler flow profiles shout restrictive, it's like the heart confessing, not giving my chambers enough downtime between beats, cramping my style. Picture the heart as a delicate instrument, and managing HOCM, akin to conducting a symphony. The hemodynamic goals for HCOM share similarities with aortic stenosis, yet a significant difference emerges, the dynamic nature of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Increases in heart rate, rhythm disturbances, and decreases in afterload become critical factors that can exacerbate. Imagine these as tempo changes in our symphony, potentially causing discord in the heart's harmonious rhythm. But it doesn't stop there. Increases in contractility and decreases in preload further accentuate HOCM, like variations in pitch and volume in our musical composition. Precision in patient treatment is crucial, particularly with HOCM. This symphony begins with typical ASA monitors, which set patient vitals. We use intraarterial catheters, pulse plethysmographic variability index monitoring, and central venous pressure monitoring in HOCM, where the heartbeat needs careful attention. We can precisely monitor the patient's cardiovascular function using these equipment. We go farther for high-risk major surgery patients. Transesophageal echocardiography performs real-time cardiac imaging. HOCM is dynamic, thus obtaining a visual assessment of the patient's heart function is vital. We're diving into how anesthesiologists skillfully navigate the complexities of HOCM. Our first movement sets the stage for a seamless performance. Picture the surgeon as the conductor, and the patient's body as the orchestra. Anesthesiologists lead with a delicate touch, opting for smooth induction agents, steering clear of abrupt changes in the heart's rhythm. Inhalation agents like sevoflurane or desflurane gracefully take center stage, avoiding intravenous agents with potential negative enotropic impacts. It's a ballet of tranquility, ensuring the heart's tempo remains undisturbed amid the symphony of surgery. As the surgical masterpiece unfolds, our second movement is a ballet of precision. The surgical stimuli, the pain, and the surgical stress become integral elements in our dance. Gentle intubation techniques become the dance steps, reducing sympathetic stimulation. Our chosen anesthetic agents are the partners in this ballet, crafted to handle surgical stimuli with stable hemodynamic effects. It's a dance of tranquility amid the complexity of surgery, where each movement aligns with the orchestrated rhythm. Moving to our third movement, we delve into the importance of maintaining normal sinus rhythm. 
Picture the heart as the soloist, relying on the steady beat of the conductor. Anesthesiologists work to ensure this rhythm persists, promptly addressing any arrhythmias that may impact ventricular filling. Surgical stimuli are carefully harmonized, ensuring the symphony of the heart remains undisturbed. Our final movement addresses the delicate balance of fluid management, navigating the ebb and flow of the surgical river. Anesthesiologists must now handle not only the surgical stimuli but also avoid hypovolemia and sudden hypertension. These can worsen conditions like left ventricular outflow tract obstruction (LVOTO). It's a careful navigation, ensuring the flow supports rather than hinders the performance, creating a harmonious surgical symphony. We dive into the delicate world of medication choices for patients with HOCM. Imagine the heart as a finely tuned orchestra, each medication playing a specific role. For patients with HOCM, we avoid certain players. Epinephrine, with its positive inotropic effects, may intensify cardiac contractions, and its vasoconstriction can worsen the already obstructed blood flow during ejection. Calcium, essential for contractility, might exacerbate HOCM by increasing the force of contraction. Instead, we choose alternatives like phenylephrine, aiming for a more favorable hemodynamic profile by increasing afterload without significantly affecting contractility. Now, let's talk about noradrenaline, a player we carefully keep backstage in HOCM scenarios. Acting on alpha-adrenergic receptors, noradrenaline induces vasoconstriction, elevating afterload. This heightened workload can intensify HOCM, potentially destabilizing hemodynamics. In this intricate symphony, alternative vasopressors like phenylephrine take the stage, focusing on alpha receptors, increasing afterload without jeopardizing heart rate or contractility. Another optimal anesthesia episode concludes. Hope you appreciated our analysis on HOCM anesthesia considerations. Until next time, remain interested and expect more fascinating content.